I think the important thing that follows this study was the approval of roxalitinib and the fact that tens of thousands of patients are now benefiting from this drug. But where will we go in terms of delivering more for our patients? I think there are two key messages. The first is, I mentioned already that even the patients who had roxalitinib later had less benefit in terms of survival and possibly their spleen responses weren't quite so good. So that makes the question, should we use the drug earlier in the course of the disease? And so we plan to open a study in early phase myelofibrosis in the first quarter of next year asking exactly that question. And um, that's also biologically plausible because the disease becomes more complex and harder to treat as it accelerates and advances and the patients become sicker. So that's one option. The other thing is to ask the question about, well, here we have a safe, very effective drug with predictable side effects, which are easily managed. So this is an ideal backbone then to add in another therapy, which is a very common theme in cancer, isn't it? We need to use more than one drug. And so at this meeting, there are many presentations about combination therapy with roxalitinib. And so the strategy would be either to counteract anemia or thrombocytopenia so you can keep your patient on the drug for longer, avoid the need for red cell transfusion, so for example the use of Danosol as presented by the Mayo group, the use of pomalidomide as presented by the German group, but then what might be more exciting is the ability to deepen the biological effect. So with agents like panabinostat, PI3 kinase inhibitors, um, smoothen pathway inhibitors, all of those now have been studied and the data is coming to maturity. And finally, uh, the next way forward is also something that we're doing already in clinical practices to combine roxalitinib for the few patients that can undergo bone marrow transplantation 